Hello everyone, welcome to 3dDesignAcademy.com. In this lesson, we will learn about the initial setup. So there are a few things when you start Elias that you might want to adjust in order to have a more accurate, uh, accurate um, modeling shading and also a few setups. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is adjust the quality. Now, what this does is it uh, adjusts the quality of the curves that are displayed and the surface edges. So let me just go to the side view and explain to you what it means. So if I were to create a curve like this, and I'll just to see you like this, right now it looks smooth, right? But if you actually zoom in, you'll see that there's it's actually a little bit jagged. So that is the same thing with uh, with a surface edge. Uh, in this model, I'm, I think it's kind of hard to find one, but if you zoom in to the curve that I just created, you'll see that it's actually kind of flat here. So if I want to exaggerate this, I'm just going to decrease the drop precision to zero. And you can see that the curves are very jagged, even though it's an actually a degree three curve. So it should, even though it is displayed like this on the screen, it is actually a very smooth curve. So in order to, uh, I think the default value is a 0.5. So what you want to do when you're modeling is to increase that drop precision to 1.0. So it's uh, by doing this, it's going to accurately display how the curve is actually behaving smooth uh, as displayed here. Now, the only time that you might want to decrease it is if you have a very heavy model. So let's say you have a grill of a car and a lots of details on the vehicle. Then that when you try to spin the model, it's going to bog down if your drop precision is to the maximum. Of course, if you have a high performance uh, computer or desktop, uh, then it, it might be you might be able to uh, up, uh, import a very heavy model and still keep your drop precision at 1.0. However, if, it, if you feel like it's a, uh, way too slow, then it might help to decrease the drop precision a little bit. Now, uh, but right now uh, when I'm modeling or right now the math model is very light, so I'm just gonna increase the drop precision to 1.0. In the next part, we are going to uh, adjust the tolerance of the shade. So now uh, I, there's uh, two types of shade that I'm gonna be, uh, actually I'm gonna be using the Studio Shade Showroom uh, to better demonstrate what this tolerance and test later uh, value does. So if you actually look at here, you'll see that it's actually kind of a little bit broken right here. So what, the tolerance is, uh, so um, this, how Elias displays the shade here is actually similar to how computer games are rendered. So it's a basically a bunch of triangles, a uh, bunch of rendered triangles. So basically what the, the tolerance does is increase or decrease the size of the triangles that, that is needed to render this image. Now the, how, the lower the value, the more accurate, alias is going to display uh, the model. The higher it is, the more roughly it is going to display the model. So in order to exaggerate this, I'm just going to increase this one. And you'll see right here how it's a very jagged, even though it's a very smooth and nice surface. Also right here, it's a curvature continuity surface. So I'll just do a go to surface edit. Oh, uh, not surface edit, but evaluate. I'm going to Check, uh, check the continuity, and it says curvature. Although it is curvature, when it's displayed, it looks a little bit jagged. So this is just due to the tolerance and tessellation issue. So what you want to do is, I think the default value is 0.1. You might want to increase it uh, down to 0 0.01, which should more accurately represent what your model is actually doing. Also, you, uh, you might want to, depending on the model, you might want to also set the test later to accurate. That is going to also increase the accuracy of the rendering. While it does a slow, uh, it might slow you down, it might slow the computer down when you're spinning the model. 
it is going to, especially when you're modeling, it's going to more accurately represent what your surface is, not the tessellation is doing. Okay, the third thing uh, that I like to do when I initially uh, start modeling is also uh, when I initially setting up alias session is also dock the palette. Right now the palette is just floating in the middle of the, um, middle of the modeling window. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press shift and click on this blue bar. And I'm just going to drag it to the left side and you'll see that uh, you'll see a gray uh, gray background pop up here and you'll see that the file the entire menu has a shifted to the right so I prefer to do this because when I'm modeling I like to have uh, all my tools available or, or most of my tools available for me to see if it's a docked uh, if it's a if it uh, palette is smaller then I can only see you know a limited number of tools where if I dock it then I can see a more wider uh, more number of tools at the same time okay um, the last thing that I'm gonna do is right now you'll see that it, uh, there's no layer you cannot see the layers so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to layer and I'm gonna click on toggle layer bar so right now there are no layers but the toggle layout by turning on toggle, lay, uh, toggle layer bar, you are able to access the layer bar. So you can uh, go to, you can create new layers and you'll be able to see them on the top right here. All right, so that concludes this lesson and thank you for watching.